Good morning, friends. The passage that we are looking at today is found in the book of Mark, of course. We are still in Mark. And it's found in chapter 10, starting in verse 46. And we're going to look all the way through 1126. So the end of chapter 10 and then the beginning of chapter 11. And there is a lot in there. All right. First, there's a story about Jesus healing a blind man. Then Jesus and his disciples enter Jerusalem in the form of a parade on a borrowed donkey. Then there's this random part about a hungry Jesus who seems to get mad at a fig tree. Then Jesus goes to the temple and gets mad there. And then the fig tree is dead and Jesus is talking about moving mountains. <laughs> I told you, there's a lot in there. And sometimes it may seem like it's not all related, like it's all just random, but today I'm gonna to tell you about how it's all connected. And this passage is also gonna tell us a little bit about being a disciple. So we already know the three parts about being a disciple. We, we know what makes a disciple, right? A disciple is someone who, say it with me, follows Jesus, is changed by Jesus, and is on mission for Jesus, right? So those are the three things that a disciple is, right? Today we're gonna to talk about three things a disciple does. So three ways in how, three ways how a disciple lives or should live, okay? First, I want you to take a look at this fruit. Now this fruit looks delicious, right? If you enjoy fruit, I bet you just wanna sink your teeth into this fruit and take a juicy bite, right? Well, if you did that, you would be very sadly disappointed because this fruit is not real. It's made of plastic. There is no juice on the inside, it's just plastic, and it would be really gross to bite into. See, as good as this fruit looks, it's really fake. Well, that part about the fig tree is kind of like the plastic fruit. You see, from a distance, Jesus saw the fig tree and it looked good. It looked healthy and alive. But as he looked closer, he realized that there was no fruit. There were no figs, not even little tiny buds of fruit coming on the tree. And if a fruit tree doesn't bear fruit or doesn't have fruit that grows on it, then a fruit tree is not really a fruit tree. It's dead or dying, or there's something wrong with it. A fruit tree is supposed to bear fruit. So Jesus looked at the fig tree and he cursed it. And he said, may, may no one ever eat of your fruit again. Now, I don't think he was really mad at it. He was simply stating a fact. The fruit tree wasn't bearing fruit, so nobody would ever eat its fruit again. So there was no reason for it to still even be standing there. Jerusalem, too, was a bit like the fig tree. You see, when Jesus and his disciples first entered Jerusalem, it was like a parade. Have you ever been to a parade? You know, when, you're in a, when you see a parade, the people that you want to see, the important people or characters and the floats that you're there to see, they all walk down the center of the road and everybody else is standing on the side of the road cheering and hollering and waving, right? Well, that's kind of how it was when Jesus and his disciples entered Jerusalem. Jesus came in riding on a donkey that they had borrowed and his disciples were walking with him and the people were cheering and shouting things like, Hosanna! And they were even laying their clothes and palm branches and big giant leaves down on the ground so that Jesus and his disciples could walk on those instead of the dirty ground because they didn't have paved roads like we have today. So it seemed like Jerusalem Jesus really loved Jesus, right? Well, as we take a closer look, we'll see that it's just like the fake fruit and the fig tree. So Jesus and his disciples went to the temple. Now the temple is kind of like the church. And when they got to the temple, it was very busy and crowded. And you would think that would be a good thing, right? I mean, 
If there's lots of people at church, that must mean that lots of people love God, right? Well, instead of the people being there to worship God, they were there because of their love of money. You see, back then, when you were going to church or to temple to ask God for forgiveness, you had to offer a sacrifice. So a bird or a lamb or some sort of animal. So some people got the brilliant idea to start selling these animals right there at the temple. Now, whether they overcharged for the animals or they tried to cheat people out of their money, either way, their purpose for being there and for selling these animals was not to worship God. Their purpose was to make money. It was all about their love of money. And last week, we learned what, what happens when you love money more than God, didn't we? So even though it seemed like the people of Jerusalem were really excited about to see Jesus and really loved him, and the temple seemed like it was full of people worshiping God, it was really just like the fake fruit or the fig tree. You know, if you and I, if we are disciples in Christ, we need to be bearing fruit. Not coconuts or bananas, but the fruit of the Spirit. Do you remember what those are? Do you remember our song? The fruit of the Spirit's not a coconut, right? What is the fruit? Because the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, right? I'll put that song in the link here so that you can watch that video and sing along with it. But bearing fruit as a Christian means that we need to live our lives showing other people love and living like we have joy in our hearts and being patient and kind with people, showing all those fruits of the Spirit. If we claim to be a Christian or a disciple of Christ, but we don't bear fruit, then we are just as fake as the plastic fruit or as dead as the fig tree. So remember at the beginning how I said that we learn three things about what a disciple does? Well, the first thing is a disciple bears fruit. Got it? So let's find out what the other one are. There are the other two things are. The next one is faith. So when Jesus and his disciples returned to the fig tree, they found that it had withered and died. And Peter, one of the disciples, was astonished. He was like, oh my goodness, look, Jesus, you cursed this fig tree and now it's dead. It was like he was surprised that Jesus had any power over the fig tree. I mean, come on, Jesus is God, right? But Jesus explained that it wasn't just because he was God. It was all about faith. In fact, Jesus told his disciples that if they just had enough faith, they could not just curse and kill a fig tree, they could move an entire mountain. Jesus said, you can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea and it will happen, but you must really believe it. And you must really believe it'll happen and have no doubt in your heart. I tell you that you can pray for anything and if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. But Jesus said, when you are praying, first forgive anyone you are holding a grudge against so that your Father in heaven will forgive your sins too. So right there we've learned the next two things. A disciple of Christ should not only bear fruit, but a disciple of Christ must have faith and must forgive others. Those are the three things that a disciple of Christ does. Do you remember the blind man I mentioned at the very beginning? Well, at first glance, most people probably would have just walked right by this man, pushed him aside, because you see back then, blind people weren't considered very important because there were a lot of jobs that they couldn't do. So this man, whose name was Bartimaeus, maybe he went by Bart for short, um, he was probably very poor and dirty. 
but he had faith in Jesus. He called to Jesus as the son of David. That means that he knew who Jesus was. He knew that Jesus was the Messiah. And even though the crowd tried to tell him to leave Jesus alone, tried to quiet him down, he continued to call on Jesus. When you pray, do you stop praying when you don't get an answer right away? Or do you continue to call on Jesus? Well, Bart continued to call on Jesus. And as soon as Jesus said to him, come here, he jumped up and ran to Jesus. And Jesus asked what he wanted. And Bart said, I want to see. And Jesus healed him. And instantly he could see. And do you know what Jesus said to him? Jesus said that, um, he said, your faith has healed you. You see, Bart had that faith that Jesus had told his disciples about. Except Bart didn't ask a mountain to jump into the sea. He asked for Jesus to heal his eyes so that he could see. And he believed with all of his heart that Jesus could do it. That's called faith. And guess what Bart did next? He was a true disciple. It says Bart followed Jesus. So we know that a disciple is someone who follows Jesus, is changed by Jesus, and is on mission for Jesus. But now we know what a disciple does. A disciple bears fruit. They don't just say that they're a Christian or disciple. They live as Jesus wants them to live, showing others the fruit of the Spirit. They have faith. They truly and fully believe in who Jesus is and what he can do. And disciples forgive others. You know, Christ came to forgive all of us of all of our sins. And he was perfect. So if Jesus, who was completely perfect and never sinned, could come to this earth knowing he was going to die a terrible death, just to forgive you and me and everybody else, I, I really don't see how I, a sinful human, could not forgive others. This week, be a disciple, bear fruit, have faith, and forgive others.